Hey everybody, we are here today for another 15 and 15 with um, the collab. I'm actually Martha Burtis. I'm the one who is doing today's um, workshop on your home on the web. Um, and in particular, this is talking about a um, tool that we have here at PSU known as Plymouth Create, which is part of a larger initiative known as Domain of One's Own, which um, I was lucky enough to be part of um, the group at another university, the University of Mary Washington, that years ago originated Domain of One's Own as a project. And I just threw up here, why would we get involved with Plymouth Create or Domain of One's Own? This comes from a piece that I wrote um, several years ago. Um, imagining sort of the goals of domain of one's own for students. And what I'm going to suggest for today is that all of these goals actually apply to faculty as well. So why Plymouth Create? Why getting your own site on domain of one's own? Well, it provides you with tools and technologies to build out your own digital space. It can help you appreciate um, how digital identity is formed, how your own digital identity is formed. And um, what, whereas for students, it provides them with curricular opportunities to use the web, I would suggest that for faculty, um, it provides you with disciplinary opportunities to think about how the web can be used. Every, I, I mean, I think every academic discipline at this point um, has um, you know, been impacted by the web and then and, and there's the potential to do um, new things within the discipline because of the kinds of technologies the web has enabled. Um, and then finally, pushing you to understand how the technologies that underpin the web are actually impacting our everyday lives. Um, and the final thing I'll just say about this is that if you're interested in having your students learn these things, do these things, use something like Plymouth Create, there's even a greater reason why you might want to be engaged so that you can learn along with your students and be part of that conversation and development. So what can you make on Plymouth Create? Great question. Um, the first thing that I would point out is um, the idea of a personal site, which um, is kind of where the name of the, today's talk comes from, the idea of a home for yourself online. And what's most important about this is we're talking about a home for yourself that isn't owned by some third party entity, right? So we all may have a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page or um, some other kind of social media site where we, um, you know, that we use frequently, where we connect with people, where we share things. Plymouth Create is a little different. It's really your own website. It lives outside of that corporate structure. Um, and you have complete control over not only what goes up on that site, but when you take it down, how you share things, who you share things with, what it looks like, how you present your ideas and information. Other things you can build, you can build a course site. Um, a space to share materials, assignments, updates um, online. How is this different though from say Canvas? The biggest difference is that all of this lives on the open web. So the URL for these sites is one that you could share with anybody. So you could share it with other colleagues at the institution. You could share it with students who are interested in taking your class. Your students themselves can take that URL with them and share it with employers. Let's say they wrote something or put something up on the course website that they're particularly proud of. They now have a public place to point, um, point people to for, that, for, that, for those resources. And then the last thing I'll just emphasize is you can build something like a project site, a place to share an online, um, uh, create an online resource, maybe to share your own research, um, perhaps to collaborate with um, um, other colleagues in the discipline or with your own students um, on some kind of project or resource website. So a few examples of all of these, a personal faculty website. This is Kathy LeBlanc from PSU's personal website. I will also just mention that the handout that goes along with today's 15 and 15 session has links to these sites as well. So you can click on the little screenshot in the handout and you can go visit Kathy's site. Um, a place where Kathy um, shares uh, information about her as a professional, but also links to an, um, her, her teaching websites because she also uses the uh, um, she, she builds course sites as well for many of her courses. She has a place for people to make appointments with her and she uses it to blog. So to, to write and post and share her own ideas. A course site example, this is from within um, the collab within interdisciplinary studies, which is the academic um, program that sits within the collab and that's directed by Matthew Cheney here at PSU. This is the course website of Matt's for our IDS senior seminar home. So a place for Matt to share with students um, the syllabus, the course calendar, updates, announcements, resources, past student projects, 
Um, so all the things that you might do on Canvas, but again, pulling it outside of the wall of Canvas and putting it on the open web. And finally, I'll point to this as a project site. Oh, I forgot to put the URL here in the slide, but again, you can get to it from the handout. This is the Georgetown Slavery Archive, which is a product out of Georgetown University, so not Plymouth State. Georgetown also uses Domain of One's Own. They have a Domain of One's Own project there at Georgetown, and they have created this archive um, of resources related to slavery um, at the university, for those of you don't, who don't know. Georgetown has um, a long and complicated history, um, as many universities do with slavery. And they have, um, as part of their uh, memory and reconciliation project there, um, created this archive where they are trying to document some of the um, materials from uh, the time of slavery at the university. And this lives on a domain of one's own um, site, it uses a different tool than Matt and uh, Kathy's sites do, but again, an open source tool on um, their version of Domain of One's Own. So what do you get if you sign up on Plymouth Create or Domain of One's Own? Um, so the first thing you're going to get is a URL. So you're going to get um, something.plymouthcreate.net. You get to decide what that something is. So it could be your first name, last name, username some phrase, word um, that's important to you or meaningful to you. Um, on that space, you can install any from a long list of open source apps. Most people use WordPress, which is a very, very popular and common open source um, web building tool. Um, it's estimated that it runs something like 40% of the world's websites. I like to mention that because if you decide to eventually use Plymouth Creator Domain of One's Own in your classes, this is a great way for your students to develop facility with a tool that's very common um, in the quote unquote real world. Um, it's something they can literally put on their resume that they have experience, experience using WordPress. But there are other um, applications as well. For example, the same um, system that's used to run um, Wikipedia is open, an open source application called MediaWiki. Um, is available in um, Domain of One's Own. All of this is on a PSU supported and hosted and sponsored server. So um, that means that you get support for what you're doing. You mostly get complete control over everything you're doing. Um, there are a few restrictions in the sense that you can only install you know, open source applications that can live on the kind of server this is. But really, once you install something, you're the sys admin. <laughs> you're in control of it. And it would be, um, I should also mention, um, it would be irresponsible for me not to mention that that also means you have complete responsibility. So you do have to pay attention to things like making sure your site is up to date um, so that it doesn't have security vulnerabilities. Um, those vulnerabilities wouldn't make anything beyond what you have hosted there vulnerable, but that's still something that you have to be aware of. Um, and finally, it is very portable. So because it's built on an open source web server, all of this content can potentially be moved somewhere else, which is what our students can do when they graduate. They can take that information with them um, and they can decide where they wanna place it next. So how would you go about doing this? Pretty simple, you'll go to PlymouthCreate.net and set up a site for yourself. Um, all you need to do that is your PSU username um, and password, um, and you'll need to pick that URL for yourself. So you might want to spend some time thinking about that before you start the sign up process. Once you've done that, you're going to just learn, kind of explore and learn your way around. These are a couple of screenshots from the back end of the tools that you might be using in the upper left. That's um, a, the control panel or C panel that you use to oversee your hosting site. Um, on the upper right, I have a screenshot there of the database tool that you can use to browse your database. You wouldn't need to do that unless you really wanted to. Most people don't get into the, the um, kind of the engine of, this, of, the, of the applications they install in the database, but it is available to you. On the bottom left there is a screenshot of the file manager, which I would say a fair number of people at some point take a look at. This is where all of the files that um, are hosted for the applications you install live, but it's also where you can directly upload files if you want. And finally on the bottom right, that's just a screenshot of um, basically the dashboard of WordPress, the tool that I mentioned earlier. So this you would use a lot if you were building a website 
this is where you would really log in regularly to upload media, create posts or pages, change the theme or appearance of your site. So you get very familiar with that very quickly. Once you've gotten familiar, it's time to just take what you're learning and create something. And I'm a big believer in jumping in. Um, there's really nothing you can do that we can't fix. So the best way to learn this is by experimenting. So again, building a personal site, create a landing page for yourself, share links, upload your CV, blog, write, share, post things that you're interested in, and just generally become more comfortable and fluent. Building a course site. For this, you would wanna think a little bit about digitizing the resources that you need for your site. Um, so if you're gonna post your syllabus, make sure you have a digital copy of that. Obviously we all have a Word copy of that, but maybe you wanna you know, change it to a PDF so it's not editable. Um, if you have other resources for your class that you wanna be able to share, you wanna collect those and have those organized. And then you wanna think about the organization and structure of the site itself. So how are you going, what are your menus gonna look like? How are students gonna find and access the information that you're posting? And then I, the last thing I recommend here is to plan and build as much as possible, but also leave room for emergence because the web is not a static space, right? The web is designed to make it possible and fairly easy to put up new things, to change designs, to um, rethink uh, the structure. And so um, give yourself permission to do that if it's, if it's necessary. Um, one of the um, benefits of being the sysadmin and in charge is that you have that kind of control. So you don't want to necessarily willy-nilly change everything every day. Um, that would confuse you and your students. But it does mean that if you discover halfway through the semester there's something new that you need, well, let's see if you can add that. Um, and then finally, if you wanted to create a project or research site, what would you do? So start by finding collaborators, right? You don't have to go this alone. So that might be people in your field, people here at PSU, maybe it's your students. We have lots of successful stories of faculty and students working together to create a project or research site. Um, divvy up responsibilities and roles, right? If you're taking on a project site like this, excuse me, it doesn't all just have to come down to you. Um, come up with a plan, make sure everybody is oriented and supported, knows who to contact if they need help, um, and then work to figure out a schedule, check-ins, milestones. I mean, really approach this as kind of a project that you're managing with that website being the product that you're building together. So those are the three um, approaches that I would recommend if you're interested in doing this in terms of getting help and next steps. If you want to brainstorm um, any of these ideas, you want to talk about what's possible, you want to look at some examples um, at any point in the process, whether you're just getting started, have started to build something or halfway through and need some feedback, I um, absolutely encourage you to make an appointment with me here in the collab. I'm happy to meet with PSU faculty and talk about what's possible, um, show them what's been done before, and make a plan for what you might do in the future. If you're looking for technical support, let's say you get started and you're not quite sure how to install WordPress or what to do next, or you've been covered, um, uncovered a bug or a problem. For that, I recommend that you uh, contact ETNS via the help desk. So send a, an email to helpdesk at plymouth.edu. They have staff there who can assist you with the technical intricacies of um, Plymouth Create and Domain of One's Own. And between me and them, I think we can give you a lot of support um, going forward, help you think about what's possible, um, and hopefully build something really great. And that is all I have. I'm gonna um, go ahead and stop the recording. That's pretty.